In the 60s and 70s, it was a different colour every day. It would have a red, purple, blue, you name it, it was a different colour. <coughs> wrong with it but our dream is Spain. They are very friendly people here then they are very nice so that's why we're staying here. Uh, the people still talk broad Yorkshire around here. I used to tell our Chris I couldn't speak two languages and he, he also thought I were good. I said English in Yorkshire. <laughs> well it, it's an well it's changing it's changing now it's changing because it used to be all mill regions and everybody knew each other. I know it's, it's people that make places not the other way around. It's a very close-knit community, um, and everybody wants to keep it that way. Against against all odds, at times we, you know, the people like the small, friendly atmosphere. There is so much now that I think people are beginning to question why, you know, and that uh, it's not, you know, you're thinking, well, do we get on? You know, it's just gone too. It, it's gone too much. People, have, I think, people feel a bit drowned by another culture. There's, not a lot to keep people here at, as you, of your age, as, you, as you're younger, but then people do tend to come back later on and it's, it's a place to settle. And, and a lot of mill arch architecture is lovely. The old Mark Horizon Mill and things like that is lovely. Yes, I think there is. There's always Yorkshire pride wherever you go, whenever you go. At one point it's a bonus, but then, when you, then I think we're in danger of becoming a ghetto. The opportunities are not here as, the, as much as they were. A lot of the, the local small businesses and things that were around here have gone, but we've managed to keep going. I think it makes people feel a bit alienated because it, their own culture is becoming swamped. Um, I think it has a great sense of community. Everybody wants to try and help everybody else, and there's still the old fashioned community spirit. <laughs> It was a hub of a textile industry. It had a bus station at 7 o'clock in the morning where every bus was loaded with workers going to work. The bus station now at 7 o'clock in the morning you're lucky if you see 20 people there. I've been in South Africa for 31 years. 
and return back to the town of my birth. When I was 18, I went to, to the top of Calm's Wood that I know very well. I'm an hanging eaten boy. And I counted the mill chimneys from as far as I could see down the Batley Valley to as far as I could see down the Dewsbury Valley. And there were 69. And I could only denounce six of those that weren't textile mills. The Yorkshire people of Batley, Dewsbury, Ravensthorpe, Murfield, they are the friendliest in the world. I've been all around the world, I've been, not only South Africa, I've been to Australia, Japan and America. But I can walk into a pub here and ask them, can someone tell me about X? They don't ask, who are you? They don't ask, why? I'm a carding engineer, I was proud to be a carding engineer. People looked up to me as a carding, I had respect. They're very friendly here. Well, your neighbours and everything all communicate. Beautiful place to live, really. When you've travelled around a bit and uh, when you see other parts of England, I would always come back to the northeast. Most, pe most people down the south, they keep to themselves. I've been down there. There's nothing like this place. Times change, people change, kids mm. change, everybody's personalities change, everybody just seems to be on the want. 20 years ago was fantastic. This day and age, the young ones are taking drugs and everything. You're scared to walk along the street when it's dark. It's all changed right round. There's, there's no heavy industry. There's not a great day for the kids to do. There's no apprenticeships, anything like that. You can't leave school and go into an apprenticeship or go into a factory or anything like that. Well, you put it this way, for a start, the coal mine should never have been closed. To me, Thatcher had a vendetta against the miners. He had three choices, pits, shipyards or building sites. I think it was slightly better because it was full employment and everybody, everybody had a bit of a sense of purpose and a lot of people knew where they stood, if you know what I mean. You now everybody's just a bit aimless. Well, that's the impression I get. I used to miss bringing me wage, pack it home, throwing it at the wife, she was a, throw us a couple of pounds out of it, get, on, get, get out and have a drink. You know what I mean? Them days are gone now. So I don't know. It's all I can really see. <laughs>
I think there are a lot of people who don't have, um, they don't seem to have any ambition. I notice it by, uh, if I go, go to work in the morning, I use public transport, you never see any bother in the morning. By the time you get off your bus on the night, um, there's, you're surrounded by drunken kids, basically. As far as the sort of the general environment and appearance of the North East, I mean, it was always a beautiful area, partially marred by the heavy industry, some people would say. Um, so places like Concert, for example, are a much cleaner place, but without any direction. They seem to be a lot of people with uh, nothing much to do. Well, I've travelled, you know. I lived in Newcastle for a while. <laughs> 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 ah, I suppose I'm a local lad. I do like hills. I think that's what keeps me in the north. I like the countryside. Uh, and on the whole, I like the people. Yes. 